Ventura, thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Tell us, uh, why did you choose to work with a project like the sale? Um, I like the story, actually. It's very, very challenging. Uh, it, it, um, it gives you an opportunity to, um, to write a soundtrack on a subject that normally people don't associate with soundtracks. It's quite challenging. What can you, what can you write on a soundtrack for, a, um, you know, as a soundtrack for a sale when a person's sitting on the desk selling? And that's that's what the challenge was. Like I have to have something which works, which um, uh, doesn't overpower the movie because the uh, the film itself is quite strong. In the beginning, when I saw the uh, the film, I didn't think it needed anything because it was quite powerful. Whatever you're seeing, like in, in this case, the sale, the movie, uh, in, in, inspired me, influenced me to write the kind of piece. But it's just, it's just basically instinct. Uh, certain uh, members of the public have uh, described uh, or responded to um, the, the artifact by saying they could actually feel the anxiety. Was this at the forefront of your thought process? Absolutely, because the movie was most important rather than the score. The score is supposed to be, the score just enhances the movie, not override it or not be separate from the movie. It has to be one with the movie. See, if, if I saw a certain, uh, certain shot, certain picture on, on the movie, which conjured up some emotions in me uh, as to what the sale, the, the sale was going through, what he was going through as a person, it's very important from from musician point of view, um, at least writing scores for movies, to understand where the character character is, to to be in that character's shoes, and to understand what they feel. And so, when you do that, then you understand what the emotion of the movie is about. And so, then you let that emotion drive you to compose the music, which indeed was done very well. <laughs> uh, thank you. I was in sales, so I, I kind of related to the movie. So that was an added thing for me to write the score for it. The title came in, the sale, and it was kind of dark. Before that, the camera zooms in under the table and shows um, not very clear images as far as the shot is concerned. What the what the film was, what the cameramen are seeing, and so Sorry. it was dark, yes. dark as in uh, something's going to happen soon. No problem, so then I wanted to write some uh, a score which gave you an element of suspense. And clearly, the, the movie's about all that. Suspense, you know, uh, tension, stress. And so I didn't want to go overboard and just came up with these few notes. And it was just by chance. We were, we were, doing, th uh, we were doing the score, and uh, I went onto the keyboard and just played a few notes, and my colleagues and myself, we all looked at each other and we knew it was... that was a theme. How much of Matthew do you see in yourself, or how much of you do you... Seeing Matthew, um, a lot actually. From the sales point of view, I could see where he was fumbling, where he was putting his foot in it. <laughs> I could point out every section. It's like ah, he's lost it now, and then now he's trying to gain back um, back his uh, footing. And I could see, I could see. I mean, I was in sales for a long, long time, so I could relate to that definitely. I'm sure most salespeople would be able to relate to that. It was quite, it's quite interesting story. <laughs> Okay, and uh, who are you? And can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Well, earlier said you said you called me Diren, so that's me. <laughs> Diren Raichura. <laughs> um, I'm a composer, producer, um, a musician, multi-instrumentalist, multi um, and have been in music since the age of four. Which instruments do you play? Uh, almost... Um, well, most string instruments, um, starting from, say, the guitar, the bazooki, the rabab, which is a Persian instrument, the oud, which is an Arabic instrument, uh, a lot of Indian instruments like the santur and bits of the sitar. and So those are the string uh, instruments that I play. Um, uh, keyboards, pianos, um, reed instruments, I play clarinet, saxophone, a little bit of the flute, uh, a little bit of the oboe. Uh, but when I, was, um, when I was about 10, I used to play the percussions, so the congos, the bongos, and then I became a drummer at the age of 11 for a band. So I've just gone on from instrument to instrument to instrument. My interest was uh, the guitar and the sax, so eventually I taught myself the guitar and the sax. I listen to all kinds of music. Um, 
sometimes uh, the heavy metal, but I tend not to go over that way. Um, my parents Indian, so Indian music was in the blood. My father was a musician, uh, again, multi-instrumentalist. My mum singing, writing poetry, so that came up from there, which is the ethnic, the Indian side of the music. I was born in Africa, so I was raised for the, for the next 16 years with listening to African music, African rhythms and African instrumentation and so my interest in not just one particular instrument um, brought me to that where I could hear a lot of instruments and learn a lot about uh, how they played the different techniques and different sounds and then came to UK and um, MTV and all these music channels and Top of the Pops um, a lot of music I listen to, jazz, funk, uh, funk, hip hop, you know, R&B, uh, trip, whatever you, I mean, there's so many different kinds of music, the underground music, um, and everything influences me uh, because I play so many different instruments. So I'd sometimes listen to a song and say, hmm, that's a nice groove, that's a nice beat. Um, and then there are times when I listen to Western classical, I've studied Western classical as well, uh, writing scores um, uh, for movies and harmony and counterpoint and things like that. So that is there as well, where the Western classical is there. I've got the Indian side of it. I've got the African music music and rhythms um, coming into it. And recently I was in Dubai, so was, um, for the two years I was kind of bombarded with Arabic music. Um, it's great. It's just uh, music is, you know, music is one world, basically. Talvin Singh is another person that um, I've collaborated with. He produced an album called uh, uh, OK, which went, uh, and the title track, uh, OK, I performed in. And that won a Mercury Award, as far as I know. So. Aha. <laughs> Dark Horse. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. Jerry Hallowells, uh, which was called Schizophrenic. That's the album that was called. Schizophrenic? Yes. How uh, bizarre, I mean, uh, uh, the connection that is, because in terms of the sale and the character of Matthew, yeah. um, it, it, the, it's reminiscence uh, of schizophrenia in terms yeah. of frames of reference. Yes. Um, so schizophonic, yeah. uh, what, what bearing did that have with actual medical condition? Nothing. <laughs> okay. Just one crazy... <laughs> yes, it, it, was, it was a crazy album. Um, uh, for the section that I wrote for, um, very Indian, the Indian, uh, very kind of poetic uh, Urdu words uh, with a very Indian composition, an Indian lady singing it. And as soon as she, uh, she finishes singing, it's just mayhem. Everything breaks loose, you know, and goes into a heavy kind of a rock kind of a beat and guitar screaming from a very kind of a ballady, soft, poetical sitar playing and so. Schizophrenic. <laughs> That's what I can put it to. Dhiran Raichura, thank you very much. Thank you very much.